Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Hardcore Survival Guide. Today we're going to build a sheep farm, and I kind of want to have an area where the wool from the sheep farm is eventually going to be stored right here in the Hobbit Hole. So we're actually going to be expanding some stuff today. I would love to do a bit more decoration in here, but I'm still not entirely certain what I want the layout to be, which is why a lot of this has been left undecorated. For now though, we're going to dig past our existing storage system and maybe fill something in around the other side. So I've dug out a passage through our existing storage room and out to the other side, connecting it to the front of the hobbit hole over here. And if we come up through the scaffolding, we will find that we are actually neatly behind the bee farms. We might even connect these up to some storage down in the hobbit hole a little later on. But for now, I think this area would be perfect to flatten out and turn into our sheep farm, or more accurately, I guess, wool farm. But before this farm can really begin, we're going to need to clear out my inventory a little bit because I need to craft dispensers and you always need a lot of inventory space when you're crafting dispensers. Gotta grab some sticks and some string and let's make as many bows as we can possibly fit in our inventory, which is about 10. <laughs> my favorite way of crafting dispensers now is actually to fill up all the slots of the crafting table with the other materials. The bows obviously don't stack, but if you put the redstone dust and the cobblestone in there, you can just shift click the dispenser out, shift click a bow back in and make them over and over again like this. It takes a little bit of practice, but eventually you get a rhythm for it, and it's a little bit faster than crafting a dispenser by clicking over here and then clicking over here. It's a little bit less travel for the cursor. It just works better. We need 16 dispensers for this if we want every single color of wool to be farmed at once. Plus, you might want a couple extra if there's a specific type of wool you want in greater quantities. We're also going to need some observers. We're going to need some hopper minecarts, and we'll need a few hoppers just to get the items from the sheep farm to where they need to go. Since the modules here are going to be the same for every single sheep we put in here. I'm only going to show you how to build one at a time, but we're going to need a hopper. We'll need a hopper minecart and some rails for that as well. So I'll just quickly make the hopper minecart. We're going to dig down two blocks here. We're going to place the hopper and below that we can place whatever kind of storage mechanism we want to have. We're going to put the rail on top of the hopper, the hopper minecart on top of that, and then we're going to break the rail underneath there so the hopper minecart can just sit on top like so, and the rail should go into the hopper so we can collect that. And now using a piston, we're going to push this dirt block down on top of the hopper minecart. So the hopper minecart is actually resting inside the dirt block. Gonna do that with this dark oak button, like so. It doesn't need to be a zero tick, but we got one anyway. And as the grass spreads, which it will do if there is adequate light from either the sky or a light source nearby, this block should revert back into grass. We're gonna be detecting when that happens with an observer, although it's more dependent on whether or not there's a sheep in there in the first place, because the sheep will occasionally break the grass, turning it into dirt, and that's how they replenish their wool. So this observer is gonna be detecting when this dirt block is turned into grass and then back into dirt by the sheep. On top of that is where we're going to be placing our dispenser and all we need to do to activate the dispenser every time the observer pulses is just put a single block behind the observer and a single redstone dust on top of that block to activate the dispenser. Now when the grass spreads to this dirt block or when a sheep eats the grass turning it back into dirt, this observer will fire the dispenser and the dispenser is going to have shears in much the same as it does with our automatic honeycomb farm over here. It's going to, there we go, <laughs> you can hear the tick of the dispenser, it's going to automatically shear a sheep if it is standing in this location. So we'll put some shears in there to start off with. We're also going to need to go and get some grass blocks to make sure the sheep cannot wander out of this square. If it eats the grass blocks on any other block in this area, that could potentially break the farm, at least temporarily, until the sheep decides to eat another square of grass, which I'm fairly certain they do even if they don't need to replenish their wool, but obviously replenishing the wool is the thing we want to detect by having the sheep eat the grass in the first place. Luckily, I already have a couple of leads in here. We could make more or kill a wandering trader to get more, I guess, but we can lead a sheep into that location. Let's see if I have any glass. So we're going to build a glass box around the outside of this and of course the reason it's important for it to be glass is that glass isn't going to revert any of these grass blocks into dirt which it will do if you put a solid block over the top of them. So there is plenty of grass around here to spread to this grass block when it reverts to dirt later. Now all we need to do is find a sheep of which there are plenty around here. Let's grab this white one using a lead. Let's drag him over the hill. <laughs> Come on buddy, this way, this way. They always get stuck on the corners of blocks. It's a little bit awkward dragging any animal around with a lead. So we can get the sheep up here. Hopefully it'll wander on top of the farm. We can just nudge it down into the hole like so and the sheep is trapped there permanently. 
And there we go, the sheep was immediately sheared thanks to the fact that it just ate the grass, meaning that in here we should now have a lead <laughs> and a couple of extra redstone components and a couple of white wool. And the dirt block has reverted to grass, which spread from the surrounding blocks, meaning that as soon as the sheep is ready to eat again, its wool should be sheared. Now it is entirely possible that the sheep might end up getting hungry before that block reverts to dirt, in which case they don't really have anything they can do, and some designs use a piston feed tape to feed more grass blocks into the system anytime a sheep eats, but that's not always the most reliable thing. It's a little bit extra complicated to set up, and honestly, the key factor here is time. This is one of those farms that you set up in an area where you're going to be around quite a lot, like your base, and you just have to wait. And unless you're using wool all the time, you're going to end up with a lot of wool just being stockpiled here ready for you to use whenever you want it. So we've got plenty of supplies here, and there's no time like the present. Let's go ahead and get the rest of these sheep moved in, and we'll dye each one a different colour, so eventually we'll be gathering all 16 colours of wool automatically. So a short time later, I've managed to guide 16 sheep into the sheep farm. So at last we have our full complement, all currently white sheep, except for a brown one and a grey one that happen to be some naturally spawned ones that I dragged in around here. We don't have shears for most of these yet because I didn't want the entire system to be full up of white wool. But we have the sheep farm built back to back here with trapdoors above each of them so that I can easily reach in and dye any of the sheep I want without them getting out at which point we could also decorate some of these with like color coordinated glass or anything like that but in this case I think the colors of the sheep are going to speak for themselves once they're all set up and if you come down here this section here is now set up with barrels in kind of alternating patterns they're kind of one block offset from each other because of the back-to-back -back style of the farm I didn't want to have the barrels too far apart but I also didn't necessarily think it was going to work to have all of the barrels side by side so what I ended up doing was having one in one out and then diverting the output from the nearer sheep farm using a system of hoppers and barrels leading down to here. Each of these other sheep has a barrel leading to the main barrel here which can potentially serve as a storage buffer along with the storage space inside the hoppers and so with nine unenchanted shears in each of these dispensers I expect we would probably come relatively close to filling that up but maybe not fill up all of the storage that I have here and I'm still working on clearing out the area down here to make sure there is enough space that we can you know casually browse these without bumping our heads on things or having to walk around the wall but what I'm thinking about potentially doing is having something like this where we have the white wool there we're just going to have two blocks of wool to signify that this is where the white wool is stored or maybe even leave an open section there for another barrel to go that can store wool products like beds, banners, carpets, all of the kind of stuff that we can make with wool. Maybe even a little bit of wool overstock if we need to clear out some storage space in these barrels. But for now I think we'll go with at least colour coordinating these and as usual I'm going to organise it from rainbow colours, red all the way down through to purple and then probably put the brown and the monochrome white through grey and black on this end here. And as I go we're going to be crafting shears and putting at least two sets of shears in each of these dispensers until we can craft a few more. So we're going to start off by turning this sheep red, we'll leave two sets of shears in there and we should now be harvesting some red wool. I'm going to run around and get the other dyes that I need and we'll have this entire farm converted into colourful sheep in no time. Okay, progress has been made. We have all of these sheep dyed, all of them have been sheared a couple of different times and and we have one of every single color. And of course, I thought earlier that it was going to be nice and easy to tell which one was which because the wool color was going to give them away, forgetting that, of course, on Java Edition, at least, a sheared sheep looks the same regardless of what color the wool is normally dyed. So I need to hop down into the Hobbit hole to show you the full rainbow that we are working on here. But we actually have a decent setup for it now, and I've even started working on a few decorations. Doesn't look like it until we walk into the room but right here we have all of the wood paneling in place we've got the wooden beams and of course each of the barrels is now color coded with the variety of wool that's going to come from the sheep above so we got red there we got orange there and so on and so forth all the way down the line we have about 
you know, 18 to 20 of each different type of wool right now. Maybe a little bit more if the sheep are feeling generous. And I think this came together super well. The only one <laughs> that doesn't have a whole lot of wool in it is the grey one. Because that was the one that was our original white sheep. And I decided that in terms of the order of where they all went, that was going to be the grey one. I had to wait for its wool to regrow before I could dye it. So that was our, our initial sheep, our kind of control experiment for the entire thing. And so now we are merrily gathering wool of all kinds. And this got me thinking we should probably end up making farms for the other types of mobs as well at least the passive mobs that are around here now typically people aren't going to bother too much with stuff like pigs and you know you're not going to necessarily want to farm sheep for meat even though mutton is about equivalent to chicken in terms of the level of food it provides a chicken cooker could be a useful farm to have around because it's one of those farms that you can fully automate and it will produce cooked chicken even if a player is not nearby i think the most useful thing is going to be cows though because cows can provide both the best food in the game in terms of steak in terms of stackable food at least even with pigs but then cows also provide leather and leather is often a very useful resource in minecraft for item frames and armor and various other things people don't tend to use it for practical armor but they can use it for armor stands and so a lot of the time you're going to want to have a cow farm i think we should probably bring a couple of cows in here and at least get them fenced off so that we can breed them so i've dug out a seven by seven area here surrounded the perimeter with fences so that the cows can't walk out of it and put wool carpet around the outside so that the player can simply hop out whenever they want to and of course a pig has walked in immediately well we may as well bring in another pig on our way back from getting this cow because there is an achievement for breeding every animal that it's possible to breed in the game so we might as well breed two pigs together while we're at it Pork chops aren't just good for player food, butcher villagers will occasionally buy raw pork chops from the player, so it's also worthwhile to breed pigs if you want to zombify a butcher and get it down to one pork chop per emerald. You can make a decent amount of cash that way. But of course what we're here for is the cows. Now of course you could just start with a breeding population of two and slowly breed your way up to a full herd of cows, but honestly I think it's better to just pull in as many cows as you can from the surrounding environment, and that way your herd starts off nice and big and that way once you start breeding them you're going to multiply the population of cows in here a little bit faster than if you just started with two so after a short amount of time gathering cows we have a decent amount here and i'm just going to go and pillage some of the hay bales from the village so that we can get hold of enough wheat to feed our first breeding population of cows and probably breed the two pigs as well. There we go, dinner time for all of you. We'll just spam right click until we got no more wheat left or until all of the cows seem to have bred up. And of course that was my mistake. Pigs don't even eat wheat, they eat carrots. It was me trying to shove a sheaf of wheat in this pig's mouth and it was just looking at me like, I don't know what you're trying to do there, buddy. Well, there we go. We bred the cows, we bred the pigs. That's a couple more ticked off on the husbandry checklist there for breeding all of the animals. That's perfect. I don't I don't know if I ever bred any sheep. In fact, I think the only animals I've actually bred so far in this playthrough have been bees. I didn't really do a whole lot of the early game stuff, did I? So in order to get ourselves a renewable source of wheat for these cows, we could of course make a giant wheat field. And I think that's probably what I would do if I planned on working on the aesthetics of this world a little bit more, build a windmill, all of that kind of fun stuff. Instead though, we're going to automate this because I figured if we've already done a little bit of redstone in this episode, what's the harm in a little bit more? So we're gonna make a fairly basic crop nano farm just using a couple of ingredients that I've mostly already got here in this redstone box. We'll make this farm over here by the cows next to the bee farm and stuff. I suppose we'll just hoe a section of grass there. We'll get some wheat seeds and plant a water source right there so that the farmland is hydrated. There we go. Plant a few wheat seeds and we'll put dispensers around the outside of this. My inventory's a giant mess right now. Let me tidy some stuff up. There we go. Much better. So we're going to be placing three dispensers around the outside of this. We could even place another dispenser over the top if we wanted to build this a different way, but I think three dispensers should be enough for the time being. We're just going to load these up with a stack of bone meal each, but of course I'll head over to the mob farm get a little bit more bone meal we've got bone blocks here as well that we can use to stock this in the meantime an observer is going to be facing down over the top of these crops and then of course around the outside we can place a couple of pieces of wool there to conduct redstone power to each of the dispensers around here now anytime this crop here changes it's going to be detected by the observer and each of these dispensers is going to fire bone meal at it, growing the crop. So with some wheat seeds in hand, we can right click on that and it pretty much instantly grows us wheat to its full age. Basically three bone meal will grow a crop to its full size 
I think most of the time. I think occasionally wheat can be a little bit stubborn, but for the most part, anytime you put wheat seeds down there, it's going to instantly grow into harvestable wheat. The last thing we need to do is make sure this gets harvested automatically, and to do that, we're going to place another piece of redstone here that's going to activate this piston. This piston is going to be dragging a block back and forth in front of the farmland, and that's going to make it completely dark inside of there, which means that the farmland will pop off whatever has been growing on it. Now, it seems to be working pretty well. We can just hold down right click. We're gathering more seeds in the process because, of course, wheat is going to produce multiple seeds and one sheaf of wheat. And there we go. We've got a whole bunch of wheat already coming through. You can set this up so the redstone here is attached to a really fast ticking redstone clock, allowing this whole process to go a little bit faster. But honestly, I'm in no rush and I think this is quite a neat design and we've got ourselves 40 wheat out of it already, which is more than enough to feed these cows on their next round of breeding, which it looks like they are ready for right now. So the herd is almost doubling in size by this point. We can of course do this with other crops as well, so I can multiply the carrots this way. I've noticed by the way that this dispenser isn't firing bone meal quite as much as the other two, which probably means that only two of the dispensers here are required to grow some of these crops, and so it only needs to use the bone meal from that dispenser when these two haven't been successful in growing it, otherwise this dispenser fails. So in theory, we shouldn't need to put as much bone meal into that dispenser. But either way, you can set up hoppers funneling bone meal into these dispensers and you should just be able to keep this running in perpetuity as long as you have bone meal brought over from the mob farm. While we're on the subject, it's also worth noting that the shears in this dispenser are eventually going to run out of durability. So we could always set up a barrel or, you know, some kind of delivery mechanism that's going to add in. Yeah, you get away from my sheep, you. We could set up a hopper or something that's going to deliver more shears into this farm, but ultimately we don't need to worry too much about that. We're going to get a decent amount of wool regardless and it's just a matter of breaking this glass block putting a hopper in there and then adding a barrel on top and keeping the wolves away and one last thing we can do with this farm is take advantage of the fact that the farmland here is not a full solid block which means that we can put a chest right here we can put a hopper outputting into that and then once we've dug our way out of the farm we'll put some stone brick stairs here to make sure we can open this chest but the farm will stay dark on the inside and we can actually just stand here and all of the drops from the farm will get collected into the chest the only downside being we'll have to reach back into the chest anytime we want to retrieve the seeds and keep placing those but you can combine the two approaches and as long as you've got a decent supply of bone meal you can effectively afk at this farm as long as you're not going to be attacked by something in the night Last but not least, we're going to head to our nearest mountain biome so that hopefully we can do something with goats. Mountain goats are one of the newer additions to Minecraft and they don't really do a whole lot right now, to be honest. They they do have the ability to give you milk. If you want to right-click them in a bucket, they will give you milk the same way a cow does. They will occasionally ram you off the mountain. They tend to get a bit mischievous and they will ram you if you stand still for a long enough amount of time. And there are occasional screaming variants of goats which will run at you a lot more often if they feel like ramming you. But aside from that, the goat doesn't really have any unique functionality to it. If you get hold of a screaming goat, you can use the ram attack in farms. They tend to jump pretty high, <laughs> as that one just did. So potentially there's some fun to be had there. But they don't drop anything unique right now, at least. In Java Edition, they don't even drop any food. I believe they drop mutton on Bedrock Edition the same way sheep do. The only unique thing about goats right now is your ability to get an advancement when you sit in a boat with one of them. <laughs> You'll get the whatever floats your goat advancement. But for now, that seems to be it for the humble goat until we're able to track down some of the screaming variety, which we'll probably do in a future episode just for fun. But as of right now, not really interested in doing that grind. But I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. It's been kind of a back to basics episode, but as we saw, I, <laughs> I kind of skipped over a lot of the basics initially. And some of this stuff is just going to be nice to have for the foreseeable future. You got a cow farm, you got a sheep farm you're pretty well set up as far as minecraft goes and that's where we're going to wrap up today's episode of the hardcore survival guide folks i hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like on the video if you did subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now